The development of the sixth generation fighter has become one of the key tasks for all the world's superpowers. However, despite the United States' dominance in the field of aircraft construction, Britain has no intention of giving up ground and is preparing a project that could compete on equal terms with the most advanced fighters made by other participants in the arms race. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at how the newest British Tempest fighter jet is doing and find out when it will join the RAF. The first Tempest originated in the UK in the midst of World War II, when the Hawker Tempest fighter jet joined the fight against Nazi air and ground forces. Becoming a worthy replacement for its iron ancestor, the Hawker Typhoon. Today, Britain again intends to replace the Typhoon with the Tempest. But, before we go over what innovations the British specialists have managed to introduce, let's recall how this ambitious project began. After Brexit, France remained in a unique position within the European Union as the only nuclear power, the leader in the aerospace industry, and a major provider of security services. In the meantime, pressure from domestic industry to develop human capital and support its own economy created a major imperative for Britain to launch a new manned fighter program. As part of the 2015 Strategic Defense Review, the country launched its own Future Air Combat System Technology Initiative, which was an attempt to mature a group of capabilities to replace the Eurofighter Typhoon and further develop the RAF fleet. One of the first steps towards this was the creation of a Japanese-British working group on fighters in 2017. By February 2018, the then British Secretary of Defense, Gavin Williamson, announced the intention of the department to develop a new combat aviation strategy, presenting it in July of that year. At the Farnborough International Air Show in 2018, Williamson officially unveiled the Tempest project, showing the full-size mock-up of a stealth fighter with delta wings and a pair of outward-facing vertical stabilizers. At the time of the announcement, the development team already included a project manager in the person of BAE Systems. Its armament subsidiary, MBDA, Leonardo UK, who's working on sensors, electronics, and avionics, as well as Rolls-Royce, responsible for the creation of the engine of the future aircraft. The amount of funds allocated by London for its development until 2025 amounted to more than $2.6 billion. At first glance, the aircraft's appearance doesn't really stand out against the background of its other colleagues. But one of its main features will be a modular structure with the ability to adapt to a specific mission and easily upgraded components throughout the life of the model. Additionally, BAE Systems intends to use the capacity of its flexible factory of the future, creating about 30% of Tempest parts on 3D printers. The fighter has a slightly raised rear fuselage to accommodate S-shaped air ducts behind the air intakes of its two engines, recessed into the body of the device. All this is done to minimize radar and infrared signatures, as well as frontal radar cross-section, hiding the Tempest from prying enemy eyes. Like most low-observable vehicles, the Tempest will most likely store all of its fuel and weapons inside, which will affect, among other things, the fighter's mass significantly increasing the empty weight of the aircraft. Most experts agree that the optimal solution would be to limit the weight of the fighter to an average between the Eurofighter Typhoon and the F-22 Raptor. But the increase of the mass of the sixth generation aircraft will be able to compensate for the installation of powerful engines. Although the final appearance of the British fighter is still a mystery, nothing prevents us from exploring the possibilities that the engineers gave to its insides. Tempest will require a lot of energy, which Rolls-Royce will handle by creating engines with a high thrust-to-weight ratio, high operating temperature, advanced power and thermal management capabilities, and low specific fuel consumption. Among the minimum technical data voiced by the creators, one can single out the Class 787 power generation at the level of 1 megawatt, which indicates a tenfold increase as compared to the Typhoon. The engines are the most important source of not only power generation for all Tempest systems, but also for their cooling, which is extremely important for the yellow aircraft, given the need to suppress their infrared signature. Anticipating such a problem in the future, Rolls-Royce launched the Embedded Starter Generator, or E2SG, program back in 2014. 
While existing fighter jet engines generate power through an external gearbox on the engine that drives a generator, the E2SG aims to eliminate the gearbox by integrating an internal electric starter generator into the core of the engine. In the first phase of the E2SG, Rolls-Royce engineers built an engine starter generator into the core of the Adur engine. During the second phase, in 2017, the company tested a generator connected to a different engine coil. The team added an energy storage system in the electrical network and a system to manage the supply of power between the systems. According to Rolls-Royce, the third phase would add new technologies in all parts of the gas turbine, including onboard dual-loop generation for higher power levels, advanced thermal management, and energy storage tailored to the operating cycle of the fighter jet of the future. Engineers would also install a power management system capable of optimizing the operation of both the gas turbine and the power and temperature control systems. Tempest Avionics is handled by Leonardo UK. The company has already undertaken a number of research and development initiatives to develop next-generation sensors, including improvements to Typhoon's radar and electronic attack capabilities. Next-generation digital beam forming technologies, the Jaguar ESM, or Japan and Great Britain Universal Advanced RF System, Universal Radio Frequency Sensor System, and efforts to implement ISANC, or Integrated Sensing and Non-Kinetic Defect Systems responsible for integrating, combining, and processing onboard data from multiple air platform sensors. Control of the aircraft will be handled by both the pilot and his assistant, AI with machine learning in the role of a co-pilot, programmed to respond as quickly as possible to various unforeseen scenarios during missions. Another killer feature for pilots will be the wearable cockpit technology, which can replace many elements of the physical control of the device with AR-VR elements, including displays with aircraft status indicators projected directly in front of the pilot's eyes. The smart helmet will track brain signals and other medical data, collecting a unique database of biometric and psychometric information for each pilot that will grow with the number of flights they conduct. That is, if the pilot passes out due to overload, the AI will be able to save him by taking control of the device. Additionally, let's not forget about several developments in London concerning the field of military unmanned vehicles, since some of these might very well take on the role of a faithful companion for the Tempest. Since Tempest's main goal for the coming decades will be air supremacy, it needs sharp fangs, and it's highly desirable that there will be anywhere from six to eight inside the case. We're talking about its missiles, of course. So far, there's been no official data on the number of missiles that it can fit in the British sixth-generation fighter. However, the Typhoon, widely used by the Royal Air Force, typically carries a set of four to six BVR, or Beyond Visual Range, missiles, two to four infrared guided missiles, an internal 27mm Mauser cannon with 150 rounds, and up to three 264-gallon, or 1,000-liter, fuel tanks. The Tempest, on the other hand, may well be armed with JNAM missiles, jointly developed by Britain and Japan. This munition was an attempt to integrate Mitsubishi Electric's electronically scanned active seeker into the ramjet-powered MBDA Meteor missile. Furthermore, Tempest is likely to be integrated with future crews ASW, or anti-ship weapon, crews anti-ship weapons, designed to replace the Storm Shadow scalp air-launched cruise missiles used by Britain and France. And the main cherry on top might just be the use of a swarm of combat drones and laser weapons, the need for which is increasing every year. As each generation of fighter aircraft has proven to be more expensive and technically more complex than the previous one in almost every aspect, the UK decided to partner internationally with other countries to accelerate the development of the Tempest. As part of the Farnborough Virtual Air Show 2020, Secretary of Defense Ben Wallace announced the addition of seven new members to the Team Tempest Consortium, GEUK, GKN, Collins Aerospace, Martin Baker, Kinetic, Spirit Aerosystems, and TALS UK. Together, they'll develop and demonstrate over 60 technology prototypes for the future fighter. In December of 2020, the UK, Italy and Sweden signed a Memorandum of Understanding to codify the relationship within the Tempest project. A little later, Japan also entered the game, announcing the joint development of an engine testbed, with Britain and the development of a demonstration radar for a sixth-generation fighter called Jaguar, which we already mentioned earlier. 
As for the price of a futuristic fighter, the total stage of development of the Tempest machine building production might reach more than $18.3 billion. For comparison, U.S. Engineering Manufacturing Development EMD, funding for the latest B-21 bomber is currently estimated at $25.9 billion. In July of 2022, the UK announced that a test prototype would be launched for the first time within the next five years. According to a press release from the UK Department of Defense, the development of the prototype is already underway at BAE Systems in Preston, England. And if you aren't expecting it in 2023, now we have at least a chance that we will see the results of the joint work of thousands of specialists by 2027. And in 2035, Tempest can become a full-blown member of the Royal British Air Force. What do you think? Will the British industry be able to show us its new fighter in all its glory by the 2030s? Share your opinion in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.